Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're going to be looking at parametric surfaces. And we're going to start by comparing this to something that we've already looked at in the past, very similar, and that is parametric curves. So we had really two ways of describing a curve sitting in either two or three dimensional space. We could use a vector function or we could use a set of parametric equations. And we've, we've used both. Um, all right, so what did, a, what did the, the vector function look like? What was the, the general setup here? Well, we'd have our position function, R of t, and we'd write this as a vector, and then there'd be an x component function, a y component function, and then a z component function. And this is our vector function. And the way we kind of interpreted this is that t was like time. And what it's doing, what this function does, is it tells us where we're located in space, the x, y, and z coordinates, or maybe just in two-dimensional space, x and y, um, at a specific time. Um, all right, so we could write it as a vector function like this, or we could just list out each of the individual component functions here, and we called those the parametric equations. So we could say x is equal to x of t, the x component function, y is equal to y of t, the y component function, and then z is equal to z of t. And then in this case, t, there was normally some kind of interval for t. So t, we'd say, is between, you know, two numbers a and b. And t is, we'd call that the parameter. All right. So this is what we've done with curves. We've looked at vector value functions. We, we did quite a bit with that. Um, now, a curve is really a one-dimensional object. It's kind of a section of the t-axis that's bent and distorted. And, but it's, it's really a one-dimensional object, and that's why we have one parameter here. Now, for a parametric surface, we're going to have similar equations, a vector function, parametric equations. But instead of using one parameter, we're going to use two, because a surface is really a two-dimensional object. So our, our setup for parametric surfaces, where we can have a vector function, but now we're going to use parameters u and v, common parameters. Sometimes we might use other variable names, but we're going to have two. And it, the setup is similar, though. So we're still going to have an x component function, a y component function, and then a z component function. But now each of these conceivably is a two variable function here. And then we can still list out the parametric equations. So x is still the, uh, the x component function, y is equal to the y component function, and then z is equal to the, the z component function. Um, now, rather than looking at our parameter as being a kind of a interval here, we can, our parameters now are u and v, and they can be a section of um, two-dimensional space. So they could be some subset of R2 here. All right, so... These are the equations we're going to be working with. We have our kind of our, our vector function we've seen with curves, our parametric equations we've seen with curves, and now we're going to be looking at vector functions for surfaces and then parametric equations for surfaces. Um, all right, so what a, what's going on, though, with these curves and, and surfaces here? So our parameter. When we're dealing with a curve, normally we have just an interval. So our parameter here, the interval was from A to B. So the way to kind of picture what a parametric or a, um, a parametric curve does is it takes a section of the t-axis. So maybe we have A and, and B here. And we're just looking at this section of the t-axis. And what the kind of the parametrization does is it takes this line, inter, uh, this interval, stretches it out, bends it around, and what we end up with 
is a curve sitting in either two or three dimensional space. So if we're, if we're in two dimensions, we might end up with something looking like this. We have our start point, and then we have our curve and our end point. So we're sitting in two dimensional. This is an example for two, uh, a two dimensional uh, curve. So what this does, what the parameterization does, is it takes this one dimensional line segment that's sitting on the t-axis, this interval, and you can kind of think of it as, you know, it stretches this line interval out and then bends it around. And we end up with this curve that's going to be sitting in either two or three dimensional space. Well, something similar happens with a parametric equations for a surface. But this time, we're going to take a section of the xy plane, or the, not the xy plane, we'll call it the uv plane. So we have this section of the uv plane, and this we'll call region D. And what it does, the parameterization does, is it kind of, again, it might stretch parts of it out, it might shrink things down, it might bend it around. And what we end up with then is a two-dimensional object sitting in, and we're going to put this into three-dimensional space so we can view this. So we have our z-axis, our x, our y, and we end up with maybe a, a two-dimensional object that's sitting in three-dimensional space. So, you know, maybe it bends it and stretches part of it out. And... <clears throat> so what the, what the parameterization does, in case of a curve, it takes this one-dimensional object and it puts it into either two- or three-dimensional space. We still have a kind of really a one-dimensional object here. Um, with a parameterization for a surface, it takes a section of the plane, the UV plane here, so really this kind of two-dimensional object, and then it embeds it into three dimensions. All right, so what are some common examples of parametric surfaces? So we're going to look at a few of them, and the um, probably the, the easiest one to start with, and we've looked at these a while ago now, is a plane. And so the, the two things we need, or really three things we need for a plane, are a point and then two non-parallel vectors, A and B. So the, the point kind of tells us where, where we're going to put this parameterization. It kind of gives us a starting point. And then the, the vectors we use to kind of get the rest of the plane. And the vector equation, or the, the vector function, we'll call it, for the parametric surface defined by a plane, that defines a plane, we're going to take our position vector of our point. So our point P, P0, we'll say that it has position vector R of 0. And let's write out the components. So x0, y0, z0. So this kind of tells us where we're where we're starting our parametric surface in uh, in three-dimensional space. So we have our position vector, our our point that we're interested in, and then we have our vector a, and we're going to multiply that with parameter u. And then we have vector b, and we're going to multiply that with parameter v. So in this case, u and v are, are the parameters, and they can be any real numbers. All right, so this is the vector equation for a, um, for a plane. We could also write out the parametric equations and this is where we 
kind of write out the individual x equation, y equation, and z equation. So our x equation, well, we're going to take the x component of r0, we're going to take the x component of vector a, and we're going to take the x component of vector b. So in this case, we end up with x0 plus the parameter u times the x coordinate of vector a, the first coordinate of vector a, plus v times the first component of vector b. And then we do the same thing for y. So we have our initial y point, y location, plus u times the second component of vector a, plus v times the second component of vector b, and then the same thing for z. Except now we're using the third component of everything. So we have our, our uh, parametric equations. And again, u and v here can be any real numbers. Um, now we've seen equations very similar to this for, again, kind of going back to this idea of, you know, we've seen things like this when we talked about curves. And the setup for parametric line. So we've seen a for a line, the parametric equation, now we're, we're just down to a one dimensional object, so we're only going to have a, um, a single variable, single parameter here. But the vector equation for a line was the position vector of some point plus t, our parameter t, times the direction vector of our line. And notice how similar this is to the vector uh, vector function for a plane now, except now we're adding a kind of a second dimension to this. And same thing for the parametric equations. The x equation for a line was x0 plus t times v1. y is y was equal to y0 plus t times v2 and z was z0 plus t times v3. So these were the equations we saw with lines. And now what we're doing with a plane is we're kind of extending out to, to a second dimension. So we have this kind of second parameter here. All right, so that's a, a common one we'll look at. And then let's talk about one more for right now, and that is a sphere. So a sphere we can also parameterize. So a sphere sitting, you know, centered at the origin with radius A. So we're looking at just the, the edge, really, of this sphere. We're not looking at the inside of it. All right, so how do we parameterize a surface like this? Well, we have our spherical coordinates to tell us what to do. And so... We're going to parameterize, let's write out the parametric equations first, kind of start with our usual spherical coordinates. So it's going to be the radius of our sphere, and then cosine theta times sine of phi. Our y equation is going to be the radius of our sphere times sine theta uh, sine of phi. And then z is the radius of our sphere times cosine phi. So again, this is our usual parameterization for spherical coordinates. The only difference here is we, we normally used rho for the radius, but now here we have a you know specific radius. We're just saying a. Um, and remember, this a way to kind of remember this parameterization is the first part of the x and y should look like polar coordinates. So, and that's what theta kind of has the same kind of role at here as it does in polar coordinates. Um, all right, so what does, so our parameters in this case are theta and phi. And when we talked about the plane, our parameters u and v, they were the parameters, they could be any real numbers. 
Well, we don't need all the real numbers here for our parameters to get the sphere. So in this case, when we use this parameterization, theta, let's write out the inequality for theta. Theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So again, think of theta as when we have our positive x-axis, theta tells us how far we're going to spin around the z-axis. So to get the entire sphere, we need to spin all the way around. So 0 to 2 pi. And with spherical coordinates, phi is telling us kind of how far we're tipping away from the z-axis. So when we're at the north pole, that's when phi is 0. And then we can tip all the way down to the south pole, and that's when phi is pi. And then pi at when phi is pi over 2, that takes us all down, takes us down to the, the equator of our sphere. Um, all right, so this is the parametric setup for spherical uh, for a sphere. Um, now we could write this in a vector form. And the, the vector form here would be R of um, phi comma theta. And it would be, we just list out the, the component functions. A cosine theta sine phi. A sine theta sine phi and then a cosine uh, of phi. So we can you know, write out the vector function like that. All right, so what does this parameterization do? Well, we have our theta interval and our, our phi interval, and that's what we have graphed here. So we, what we're doing is we're taking this kind of two-dimensional object and I have theta graphed on the vertical and phi graphed on the horizontal here. So this is really the kind of the, the domain D. And so what the parameterization does is it takes this two-dimensional object sitting in two-dimensional space and it kind of stretches it and bends it and we get this two-dimensional object sitting in three-dimensional space now. So you want to think of the, the parameterization here. All right, so just to kind of, again, picture what's going on. Let's say we pick a random point. Mm, yeah, let's do this point. And let's look at the, the grid lines at that point. So let's look at the vertical line going through that point. And let's look at the horizontal line going through that point. So this vertical line, what that gives us is a line of latitude for our sphere. So let's say we have, we have our point, uh, yeah, let's say it's this one right here. <clears throat> and so what this vertical line does is this is giving giving us the curve with a fixed phi. So when we fix phi, that's giving us all the points that have a fixed angle away from the z-axis. So it's giving us this line of latitude here. And then if we have fixed theta, and you can probably guess it, so if we have a fixed theta, that's going to give us a line, a line of longitude on our sphere. So that would look something like 
So it's kind of it's kind of neat. We're taking this, you know, two-dimensional flat rectangle and we have these line, you know, vertical lines and horizontal lines. And what our parameterization does is, is kind of distorting this rectangle so that we end up with a sphere. And the the vertical lines, if we're kind of looking at theta along the vertical axis here, um, but if we hold fixed phi, that's giving us a line of latitude. And if we look at fixed theta, that's giving us a line of longitude. Um, all right, so this is another one of our common parametric surfaces. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I don't think we have the, the backside of this uh, theta. Yeah, because A here is going to be a positive value, so we're not going to be reflecting through our... So maybe it gives us half of a line of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that better. So it's just kind of giving us... Well, still a line of longitude. But it's not all the way around. So it kind of starts up at the North Pole and then goes down and then it ends at the South Pole. Yeah, and that's because we're, we're using positive radius. And when we hold theta fixed, we're, we're using uh, theta values that go from 0 to 2 pi. So conceivably, when theta is zero, we're, we kind of have the uh, the longitudinal line that goes through the x-axis there, positive x-axis. And then when theta is pi, we're going to have our longitudinal line that goes through the negative x-axis. And then when we get back to 2 pi, we're back to the positive x-axis. So imagine just kind of this, what theta does is it takes this loop starting at the... Um, or this arc starting at the North Pole and ending at the South Pole, and then it just kind of rotates that around the, uh, the z-axis. Um, all right, so these are two common, two common uh, parametric surfaces. We'll look at a few more in class. So we'll, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.